Graham Potter faces two games to save his job and the latest on Andre Santos' loan move. Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Childs back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. It's Monday, it's the start of another difficult week for Graham Potter and for Chelsea. I guess the relief at the moment is Chelsea don't have a game until Saturday, so they can't ruin our mood any further until next Saturday. That is kind of the, the best thing about Chelsea at the moment, is actually not having a game, which kind of demonstrates the state of things at Stamford Bridge at the moment. We're going to break into some, you know, really big things today regarding Graham Potter, his future, the latest news around that, but also Andre Santos, a player. There's been a lot of stories around regarding his work permit, but also a potential loan for the rest of this season. We'll, we'll get into the latest on that. If you are new around here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads. And if you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. Son of Chelsea is a part of the 90 Min podcast network i did my review yesterday of the spurs game over 20 minutes please go and check that out if you have not already the reaction has already come in uh, regarding chelsea their stance regarding graham potter and matt law reporting today that graham potter faces make or break games despite backing from the chelsea owners the message from the owners remains one of wanting to provide support and backing matt law reports and yet the growing feeling around Chelsea is that the next two games will ultimately be make or break for head coach Graham Potter. Chelsea's run is not just testing the faith of the owners, with senior players now said to be concerned over whether or not Potter can turn the situation around. New signings are shocked by the pressure they are already under and anger among those who are having to be left out of the match day squad. So the next two games, we've got Leeds on Saturday in the Premier League at home and in Borussia Dortmund their second game in the Champions League last 16 which really is the last thing for Chelsea to play for this season Champions League qualification long gone at this point of the season my feeling around Graham Potter at this point is that I probably still am in a, in a minority of people who can see why you would keep him for the rest of the season and if you're going to keep him beyond those two games no matter what happens I think you do just keep him for the rest of the season but I am now at a point where with and I broke this down in yesterday's review in terms of the lack of progression the lack of performances the lack of evidence of a team that looks to be inspired by their current head coach there has to be some accountability. There has to be some responsibility on those in the dugout that they aren't just getting a free pass each week to consistently lose games. The The feeling around Chelsea, the feeling around Chelsea as a club, not just in terms of internally with those players, with the impact this is having, particularly on those new players and younger players that we've invested in for the future and what that's doing for them at the current moment and their progression at Chelsea. But then also just, you know, the pulse of a club, the fan base, the, the the mood around Stamford Bridge getting worse and worse if results continue to spiral downwards and what that means for the rest of this season. And those are very real concerns and concerns that I'm sure are being had as we approach Saturday's game. And it's very hard to make a case. You know, there's a lot of comparisons at the moment and I've made them myself and I think they're fair when you look at other coaches who've had long-term success over a period of time and, and and have had that trust during difficult periods. I think Arteta is a very, you know, valid comparison just based on the fact that he went through some awful spells as Arsenal head coach. I think the winter of 2020 is, is the most relevant one in this situation of the fact that I think they lost eight of their first like 15, 16 Premier League games in that season and were close to the relegation zone. And a lot of, you know, back then, you know, you weren't in a minority if you felt that M Mikel Arteta should have been sacked. And there was very little evidence of sticking with him as, as Arsenal head coach and, you know, have massively regressed since Emery and, and all of that stuff. Obviously, they stuck with him even through a difficult start to last season. And they're now, you know, reaping the rewards of that. But even through that, there have there were signs of some you know progression there were high points there were there was the win over Chelsea in the FA Cup final that was very painful for us to experience but that was a massive moment for him as a head coach to win a trophy so early on into his time they beat Manchester City in the in the semi-final of that competition too people reference Jurgen Klopp in his first season they reached two cup finals they also had some big wins away from home against Chelsea and Manchester City and there were some dramatic moments. That may be around the corner for Graham Potter. That could be the Borussia Dortmund game. But in the block of games we've got of him as Chelsea head coach at the moment, the lack of joy, 
the lack of those moments, the lack of inspiration, the lack of a sense that these players really are going above and beyond for him, the decision-making to persist with older players who aren't going to be here for the long term when it, the briefing is about a younger squad is confusing people and I absolutely understand why it is and I can understand why people are looking at a team that is still relying on players who won't be here for the long term when you've got these young players being even out of the match day squad, the chopping and changing, the lack of a coherent style. Chelsea not only being one of the least productive sides in the top four divisions, but just watching a team that lacks any sort of depth to it at the moment. I'm talking about in terms of the style of play, in terms of what they're trying to accomplish on a weekly basis and the lack of spirit that you know goes beyond those kind of tactical things and, and character. So that is why at this point, speaking to some people who I deeply respect in the Chelsea community, you know, I've reached a stage where you, know, I'm, I, you can't bat away the criticisms anymore. You know, because it's just it's just so unenjoyable. And he needs a result and he just does. And you know, I think that the make or break style now sort of or you know, two games to, to save his job, I think maybe tells a story that things are slightly changing in the hierarchy and they know it can't go on if you just keep losing over and over again. But then also what comes after that. And we haven't really got to that stage yet, but I do find that's a slightly different framing of that vote of confidence that we didn't get sort of last week of why he has not been sacked yet but it is very hard to to see many positives at the moment and I, I'm just you know you just dread to think if Chelsea do lose on Saturday even a draw against Leeds um, you know because Chelsea still have to reach about 50 you know 40 50 points to survive in the Premier League and that's just a ridiculous point to be in and you know when you look at around in the Premier League and you see and just around in football, when I just see so many moments of joy that other clubs are getting at the moment, and you just wonder why can't that be Chelsea? Uh, why can't we get that from a group of players that are talented? That why can't he get more out of these players? I, you know, we can talk about the goal scoring issues that have been present for a long time. We can talk about the muddled squad that's been a big problem for a lot of times. I was just listening to Joe Tweedy on the um, the Tinkerman podcast. He actually released it last week, but it's still, of course, very relevant today about how these are problems that we've been discussing at Chelsea for a while now. So they're not new this season. They're not some sort of revelation that we've come to. But even with those problems and criticisms that can't just be swept swept under the rug and, and dismissed, there was still a level of productivity that was getting Chelsea close to Champions League spots that was getting them to a position where, okay, we aren't a million, million miles away from maybe challenging for the Premier League title in the future. The fact that it's regressed to such a point where the players look so drained of confidence that's my big fear as well like just in terms of character and in terms of getting those players to respond you know how long does it go on until it, it has reached a point of no return and for a lot of people watching on supporters they feel that point has been has been reached uh, you know a lot of them felt that that point had been reached even before the Southampton game and to be honest I, I think that that is it's just very hard to argue on the other side unless you're just going this is going to peter out into a 15-16 season which I, for me is I've gone from a point of thinking 6th or 7th to now 15-16 you know that sort of ending to a season is kind of the best case scenario which still is simply not good enough with the talent at, I think at Graham Potter's disposal and I don't think we'll get him much credit by that point I, I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of appetite for him to continue but that is maybe what the new ownership is looking at to just get to the summer survive to the summer um, but we, we will see how it goes second story today regards Andre Santos so the work permit didn't go through um, but it does look like now this is Nazar Kinsella reporting today that Chelsea wonder kid Santos set for Vasco da, da Gama return. Of course, that's the, the team Chelsea bought him for. Um, a short-term loan deal allows Chelsea a summer look at the midfielder who should now get a UK visa. Um, the 18-year-old midfielder is set to return to Brazil after failing to get a work permit to, pay, to play in England following his 16 million move to Stamford Bridge in January. Santos is set to have a medical ahead of a move to Vasco where he will play up to nine matches before joining up with Brazil squad for the under-20 World Cup in May. Um, his games for Vasco in the Brazilian First Division could be crucial to gaining a UK visa after he missed out by just one point. It is really frustrating that we can't get Santos through and, and you know get him involved for the rest of the season. I think that he was a player that I spoke about a couple of weeks ago now in terms of that excitement around his potential at Chelsea. Um, but, you know, it's, it's the best case scenario. And I know, I, I think it was Fluminese, wasn't it, who were interested in a loan move. That hasn't happened now. 
you know, going back to an environment he's used to and as well his continued growth for Brazil at the international level, even at the youth ranks, is is really impressive. And it's not going to be long now until he's, he's getting the senior call up. But hopefully for his sake, he gets that game time, the loan move goes through and then we'll see him in the summer. Uh, because still a player we, we should be excited about. And, and I think one of these players that Chelsea hopefully feel internally can turn out to be a real gem in the transfer window for us. So hopefully that goes through. And I'm sure it's going to be something for, for Chelsea fans to watch and, and to 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 see over the next few months how Santos develops because he had such a good campaign for Brazil um, recently at, at the youth stage. And, and hopefully that development continues and ready to become a part of Chelsea in pre-season. But that is it for today's edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch or listen to it. You can follow me on Twitter at Chelsea, and I will see you again very soon. All the best. Yeah.